I don't think we've ever had a live show quite like this before. Today, we are going to attempt to put the new website that we've been documenting the creation of in this show live during office hours. It just felt like the right thing to do, right? It's, it's been, the whole journey has been documented here in the show. So today, it's either going to go really great or it's going to go really bad. And you're going to find out live with us. It's office hours with me, Chris. Hello, everybody. Welcome into Office Hours 11. We thought, what could be more embarrassing than months of hard work failing live in front of everyone? But to help save us and make sure that doesn't happen, our buddy Alex is here. Hello, Alex. I'm here in spirit. I'm frantically uh, thinking of all the things that could go wrong. (laughs) And prepping in the background. Yeah. Thank you, sir. How you feeling over there, Brent? I feel nervous. Like you said, it's been months of hard work from the community, and I've just been sort of watching them do their stuff. But it's all culminating today into this wonderful thing. I hope, fingers crossed, I have lists of the things I think will go wrong and how we think we might need to fix them. But I think this might be the day. This is exciting. Well, it's very time appropriate because we got a note from our very generous, friendly hosting provider over at Scale Engine, and they were reminding me that we are the last customer still on the service and that the service is on life support and that we need to migrate as soon as possible. (laughs) Were we also the first customer? (laughs) Maybe. Wouldn't that be something? I mean, it was very early in Scale Engine's history, so it's very possible. We're going to get to the new website. We'll we'll buy a little bit of time uh, by talking about a little podcast news. I've been thinking about what I want to, what kind of quote unquote news, if you'll allow it, that I want to cover in this show. And it dawned on me, it's stuff that, it's stuff that I want you guys to know about. You know, it's stuff that I want the Jupiter Broadcasting audience to just be generally aware of. And so in that vein, I thought, let's talk about this Twitter podcasting platform. They're setting up a new hub for podcasts on Twitter. And tell me what you think about this twist, Brent. You don't just pick the podcast you want to listen to. Based on the people you follow and eventually your listening history, they're going to automatically tailor audio stations to you. They're trying to solve podcast discovery by automatically selecting the shows that you get to see in your feed. So you don't just go there and say, I want to listen to Office Hours. You go to the podcast hub and you just get podcasts based on what their algorithm thinks you want. It sounds like a really interesting concept, almost like your own like uh, radio station of sorts. But I'm not convinced that that's why people are going to podcasting. I know I'm going to podcasting to find very specific topics and niches that I want to learn more about. And I don't really want to hear other things, <laughs> you know, when I'm in the mood for a certain thing. So I, I, it'll be curious to see how you can customize that stuff or maybe tailor it a little bit um, because it's just if it's just becomes this major ad platform and they you know the more you pay the more your podcast shows up in people's feeds i think it might just i think it might just fail miserably <laughs> well that's what it's about right they're trying to sell ads they want to sell ads on and in between podcasts mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah not for me i don't think <laughs> i mean they might have something here it might be interesting but uh Uh, They're going to probably ingest the podcasts and stream them from their own CDN so the podcasters won't get any insights in the actual downloads. It'll be yet another closed platform that we have to go to to retrieve information like that. And how do you even know if you can trust their numbers? It's not something podcasters like to talk about, but there's a little dirty secret in podcasting. Not all podcast download numbers are created equal. And there are some ways to measure them, which will greatly exaggerate your downloads. And there are accurate ways that have been refined over decades of podcasting to try to get them as accurate and perhaps even a little conservative. And as a podcaster, you have to choose which direction you go. And when you're using a platform like this, you got no idea what Twitter is doing on the back end or Spotify is doing on the back end. So you have no idea if your numbers are legit or not. We all just have to nod along and go, okay, well, those are the numbers. So we'll just, you know, that's what we'll tell advertisers. It's not a really great system. And they can fudge the numbers in their own sort of 
in their useful way, you know, however they want to be seen. So, oh, look how many ads we're selling. Uh, no, Spotify is not already doing that or anything. <laughs> 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 and you, did you see that YouTube announced podcast support at the podcast movement? But what it really is, is just like an editorial page of podcasts on YouTube. But some of them are just like the NBC Nightly News and stuff. But missing other podcasts that would be obvious and they say they're going to have more in the future for podcasts where they're you're going to upload your audio file to YouTube and they're going to process it and they're going to host it like they do YouTube videos with a player and they want to become the number one destination for audio podcasts on YouTube. Okay. But that'll be yet another place that has its own analytics that has its own API, its own backend. It's not going to be, you know, just like, you're not going to be able to just like get an RSS feed from it, right? It's just all of these different companies want to create their own closed platform around podcasting. And we're seeing some of the biggest tech companies in the market try to get into this. And the thing that has made podcasting work has been RSS and just the open nature of that, the decentralized nature of podcasting is what has kept it alive for so long and allowed so many different people to experiment with different business models. And when you bring it into these closed platforms, it's their business model and it's their rules. And we have seen what the influence of that is like on YouTube. Content creators on YouTube create content for the algorithm. They don't create it for you, the viewer. They create it for the algorithm. Because they need to get the attention that creating content for the algorithm gets them in order to be successful on the platform. Because to get any kind of significant revenue and ad deals and to get recognition, you have to bring in millions of views, literally millions of views. And the only way to do that is to be constantly thinking about how to optimize for the algorithm, not the viewer. That's a total misalignment of incentives. That's the same thing that will happen when Twitter, if they get any kind of foothold in this or God, obviously YouTube, if YouTube becomes a serious player in podcasts, it twists the incentives for the content creator. An open, decentralized platform is inherently just going to be more biased towards the user. It's going to be more biased towards the listener. And that's why I think things like Podcasting 2.0 and the namespace spec and all of that stuff, which brings a lot of nice features, things that are equivalent to things like Super Chats and cross-platform comments and live feeds. It brings it universally to all apps and you can stay in the podcast app and there's no algorithm involved. That I think should be the future. And so when you see these companies that are coming in here and want to do these new closed podcasting platforms, it feels like they're coming in a decade late. Like you guys are like at least five years, maybe 10 years too late. This never works in podcasting. By that same token, I think I read this week that uh, Apple have seen a 300% growth in podcast usage or subscriptions or something like that. So Clearly, there's something happening in the industry. Whether podcasts means the same to you and I as it means to big tech, I doubt that very much. But Yeah, there are all kinds of different things are being called a podcast today. And it's interesting, you still see iOS has overall a larger market share in podcast listenership than Android does. Our audience is slightly predominantly Android, but only slightly. And we have a really technically focused audience. But most podcasts, it's predominantly iOS. I got I to gotta figure it's just because Apple has invested in the space for a long time. What has changed, though, is they're getting a little more skin in the game, right? They're, uh, they're promoting the podcasts like Darknet Diaries, who are making a lot of money off of the podcast subscription service that they offer only through their app, only through their service. And they're starting to kind of promote that stuff more and more. So I don't really like that direction. But so far, out of all of these tech companies, Apple has been the most benevolent, in my opinion. Thankfully, I have to say. <laughs> so go away, Twitter. That's, that's my take. Get out of my office. I want to give another quick mention before we get to the website launch. There's something really awesome happening. And we just kind of got tangentially involved with it, with the new website project. And I'm talking about the cross-section of Podverse and Albi. So when we were building the new website, we wanted to embed Podverse Player right in our site. We wanted a podcasting 2.0 compliant web player. It would be ridiculous to launch our new website and not support some of the new podcasting 2.0 features. You got you to try to walk the talk when you can. And Brent, 
the Podverse team was super respondent to making fixes and tweaking things to make it work on our website, weren't they? Yeah, we had Mitch on office hours, actually. I, I forget exactly which number. Someone will remind me or surely will link to it. But I think it was from that conversation. It just sort of sparked a whole bunch of collaboration back and forth. He was willing to work very hard at implementing some really neat features that we requested and to work with our community directly to sort of do some bug testing and to implement new features. And uh, he would stay up late and do those right away. And I think he was as excited to work with us as we were with with them, or at least that's how I I'm putting it, but, um, it was super fun because it was like this really quick iteration and, uh, we could give feedback to features he had just implemented and it was a very, very fun collaboration. And that was kind of a hint of what this website is beginning to do. Um, and we, we've collaborated with a few other projects as well with bug fixes, but I think that was with Podverse was a, a clear sign of exactly how we want things to go. Yeah. And Mitch is such a great guy. And I feel like that collaboration kind of led to getting in touch with the folks behind Albi, which is a browser extension that I think has a ton of potential. I was initially very skeptical of Albi. I have to be honest, I'm really skeptical of anything to do with Bitcoin and the browser. I just don't like the two things to touch ever. But as we go through this, I started to feel a little bit better about it. And then I think because of that collaboration with Podverse, I had an opportunity to jump on the phone, actually it was like a Google call or something, with some of the folks behind Albi. And I was able to ask questions and they asked questions of me. And now I'm feeling a lot better. So the goal of Albi is a minimal web extension that allows you to interact with the Lightning Network programmatically. You know, you know I love that. So they've focused on web payments. And what is awesome is they do offer a hosted solution. It's, it's really simple. But the extension also just supports all the standards. You can work with your own self-hosted node, your own infrastructure, your own offline stuff, your anything that you've set up, it'll integrate with. And the extension has kind of turned into this API that is now available to apps. So you can bring your own Bitcoin wallet or Lightning wallet to each individual app. So instead of all of these podcast apps needing to each have their own Lightning wallet, Albi has kind of created this common set of APIs that you can bring your own stuff to each individual app. And so I look at this as like the, uh, the Albi wallet is kind of like a checking account where I'll put a, like 10 bucks worth of sats in there. Now, that's a bag of sats that I can bring to my different applications for boosts. And Podverse has announced a partnership with Albi to tie right into this. And so having an opportunity to speak directly to Mitch, having an opportunity to speak to the people behind Albi, and then also having seen them put their actual actions where their, where their words have been, having watched the, both of them commit code to their open source repositories in response to community feedback and being super responsive and understanding has really given me a good feeling about where all this is going. And so today, as we're about to launch the new website, I feel better than ever about having Podverse embedded in our site. I think it's going to become my new podcast player now that they've announced this partnership with Albi, because separately, I was watching Albi and thinking, this is really the way this should be done. These guys have really nailed this. I love that it can tie in with my existing self-hosted infrastructure. I don't have to rely on them. They're not custodian anything. It's just the way you'd want it to be. And to bring these two different free software projects together, oh, it's so so fantastic. So we have details about that in the show notes, but Podverse is just getting better and better. They just rolled out boost support on the mobile app. It doesn't have streaming yet, I don't think. So I may give it, you know, one release or so before I switch over, but I am just absolutely excited about it. And then the great thing is, of course, is it integrates perfectly with our website too. Speaking of which, boys, <laughs> what do you say what do you say? How about this? Let's do this because uh, I got a little. I got a little business to attend. We all got to go over to li right now as we're listening. Let's go give Linode a little holler. Linode.com slash Jupiter. I want. I want the audience to give them as much love as they can right now because Linode is hooking us up on this road trip. They're sending some swag. We're gonna get updated shirts that have the new meetup locations on there. We're gonna get a Linode plush. Then we're throwing in some Jupiter Broadcasting stickers and other swag. We're going to create geocache boxes. And of course, Linode is helping us put gas in Lady Jupes to get us down the West Coast for all of these meetups. And 
Linode's where we're running this. We're hosting this on Linode. It's what we chose. When we decided it was time to build a new website, there was nowhere else we were going to go. Linode.com slash Jupiter is how you support office hours and get $100 for 60 days on a new account. It's our hosting provider. They got 11 data centers around the world. They are their own ISP. And then they have a ton of great features. They have object storage. They've got a cloud firewall. They've got bare metal boxes if you need it. If you got some infrastructure management tools, you know, you like your Terraforms and your Ansibles, Linode's going to work great with that too. So go try it out and support the show and give them a little holler for all the support they've been throwing at Jupiter Broadcasting. Linode.com slash Jupiter. All right, boys. Shall we, uh, shall we do the drum roll? Are you ready? Ugh, time to crack some knuckles, I think. This has been a day I have been waiting 10 years. Our website's 13, 14 years old. It's been WordPress has served us well, but I have been waiting for a long time. Let's pull the ripcord. Let's take it live, gentlemen. Okay, so we'll just wait for the deploy to production, GitHub action to run. I'm distracted by the film here. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. All right. How are we doing over there, gentlemen? How are you feeling right now? How are you feeling? The uh, CICD, GitHub Action, that we're using to build and deploy the site is currently running. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've merged the first of two PRs that we need to merge. Uh, and so that first one, oh, it's, it, it changed the production URL in the Hugo configuration from new.jupiter to just jupiterbroadcasting.com. I think that ran. Let's go and check. Yep, number 355 is all good. So next we need to merge the infrastructure. Oh, Brent's already done it. Okay, cool. Whew, jump the gun there, bro. I accidentally Whoa. leaned on the click. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Brent got excited. I did. I did. This is such a funny way to deploy websites through GitHub pull requests and click two buttons yeah exactly right yeah it's so funny and now all i need to do is run the automation that will update cloudflare so it'll point the dns to the new the new website so all right all right i'm running that now that's, that's running that's not fully automated it's running locally at the moment <laughs> finally what i'm impressed by is um the multiple stages of automation, how they all kind of work together. This is a uh, uh, relatively new to me. So to, to to be able to see this in action on a daily basis, whenever we merge pull requests, but also to see how that's even evolved in the last you know month or so, uh, has been really neat. So I this is exciting to me, and I've been looking forward to this for quite a long time. But also to see that you click a few buttons, and for the most part, it just kind of works. Is well, I. I say it works. Maybe I'm the speaking a little, <laughs> a little quickly. We haven't actually tested the thing. We but. shall see, right? <laughs> but uh, it feels super exciting. And I think kudos to the whole team that helped put all that together. I know there's some new end-to-end -end tests as well that uh, Kyle Potts has put in place, which tripped up Alex because it's looking for a certain URL, which we just changed. But uh, Alex, I think you cleaned those up too. So yeah, some very, very exciting stuff has happened in the last few weeks. And I want to say thanks to the community for helping us put all that together. It's been sort of amazing to watch all that happen. Super incredible. Super, super incredible because it all came together at the right time. You know, one of the things that's held us up with this website forever has been, I knew I didn't want to deploy another really heavy CMS-based website. I, I think the WordPress project is great. And if you've got a WordPress site and it's working for you, that's that's fine. I burned out on it. I burned out on the cycle of constantly having to do updates on WordPress and the plugins and things breaking and just the heaviness of it all. I just really want people to download my MP3s. That's all I really want. And so a flat file site was always a direction I wanted to go, but it wasn't something I was capable of doing completely on my own. And so because of that, it just kind of sat here. But then like a lot of confluence of events kind of just came together, like the concept of value for value, the matrix room, uh, just the state of our community, Brent's participation, and just a lot of different things came together. And then that deadline, that deadline from Scale Engine, I guess this was the time in a way. You know, it feels like this was the moment in history where everything came together to actually make a community project like this possible. And assuming the actual thing goes live, 
I think this is going to be our most successful community project that we've ever done. I would say it is, even if, if even if our our merge today doesn't work. <laughs> fair. I think that's that's probably pretty fair. Yeah, just to see, you know, I've I've been lucky enough to to watch all of the activity on a daily basis for what the last two months, maybe even more than that. And uh, kudos to Stefan too. He made the MVP just you know, on Alex's whim, Alex was just like, well, can someone show us one of these technologies and how it might work? And, uh, that was really the seed to building what we have today, which is, has come a a super long way. Stefan took some really early leadership there that I think was absolutely, well, it just was, it was inarguably just the invaluable step we needed to just get the ball rolling and for people to be inspired to participate. It just took one community member. And, you know, this could be a website that lasts us a very, very, very long time. So the value there is just, it's just off the charts. It's, it's really awesome. You hoping for another 10 years or what? Oh, for sure. At least. Yeah. Right. I mean, now that we don't have crazy rickety plugins that are like replacing stuff in real time with short code, you know, inspired uh, execution commands. Like it's just like ridiculous the way WordPress worked for us. (laughs) Hey, look at that. We're starting to see some people in the mumble or I'm sorry, in the matrix room. Uh, see the site. KP Tech just said I, that I uh, called what he does daily funny, which is deploying websites via GitHub. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Careful what you say, Chris. I can't help it. It's just how I feel. Like when I, in my world, like having to go to the server and change config on the server and then go to the DNS and change the DNS manually, that's how you knew it worked. <laughs> I think maybe that, that means they're calling you an old man. Yeah, right. It's the old way to do it for sure. I acknowledge that. And the new way is better. So I acknowledge that too. My DNS isn't updating. It's it's just, everything should be in place. So if you went to jupiter.com, now, jupiterbroadcasting.com right now, you may or may not see the new site. Maybe. <laughs> One thing's for sure, it seems like the old site isn't loading. So we've got that ha- going for us at least. So we've at least broke things. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did delete www. It's just jupiterbroadcasting.com. Oh, now. I think we got to have the WWs, don't we? People put the WWs in there. Do they? Oh, man. I don't know. Although he, I don't know. I mean, I think they still do. I think it's a thing people you do. You did in office hours. It's the only show of ours that requires it. <laughs> no, no, no. There's a history there. I can't remember what it is. Is there? Yeah, there's. Uh, Wes would remember because he remembers those things. Oh yeah, it's not loading for me. No, no, that's the new website. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, super, <laughs> super low profile. <laughs> really clean design. Very minimal. Mm-hmm. We call it 404 inspired. Is what we call that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what's really fun is now. Now I think I'm in a like a caching loop of hell. Uh, I'm being redirected to www. Even though there is literally no <laughs> DNS record in existence for that URL now. Who needs it, man? Honestly, does okay? Can I ask you guys a question? Does Joe Rogan even have a website for his podcast? <laughs> you don't need a website today. You don't. Need, well, let's just leave it down, guys. Hold on. You know what's easier than having a new site up to date and totally modern? Not having a website. That's even easier. Let's just do that. It's the new minimal movement. Uh, Dan, (laughs) actually, in the chat says that it's working for him. So there's that. You're starting to see it there, Dan? You're getting some propagation over there in your neck of the woods? Woo! Very good. Hooray. (laughs) Yeah, that's amazing. Minimex sees it too, then. I feel like we need an applause. Chris, you got... You got something? Oh, Brent, you card. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Just for you, buddy. Thanks. How you feeling right now? I'll be happy when I see it loaded. Yeah. You're going to (laughs) feel even better when it loads. I think it's definitely a relief. I think what will be interesting now is I have a a little short list of all the things internally at JB that are going to break because of what we just did Um, from publish. You know, we got a few publishing things to clean up and the old website. Yeah, I guess it'll be I guess it's a goodbye. Like it's been in my life for a long time now. uh, But the new one is so much better. (laughs) You're seeing it. You got it. He's got it. He's got Does it. Does it show up on the camera? Come on, focus. Yep. You can do it. Jupiterbroadcasting.com. Hooray. It's beautiful. Oh, it's so it's so beautiful. <laughs> nice work, Alex. And and I couldn't have done it myself, to be honest. Um I, I I've been We should say big thank you to Alex too. Yeah, I was gonna say, um I think it's been really neat to just help focus people in certain areas. And Alex, you've joined in the last few weeks on the project and uh, your efforts have been amazing. So thank you very, very much. 
Much love. Now, I'm sure we will have a few issues we discover oh, yeah. over the next couple of days. And, it, you know, it's funny because this comes out on a Friday. We're doing this on a Tuesday. There could be horrible issues between now and when the people hear this episode. And then they're going to hear us sitting here celebrating. So I have to acknowledge that. But, yeah, just a really big thank you to Alex and to, to everybody involved because, you know, even 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 Wes, you know, he wasn't necessarily directing uh, or contributing code, but he added a ton of back end information and knowledge and advice. And oh, yeah, that's been really great, too. So. All right, gents, the analytics are even working. So we're using a self-hosted analytics platform called Plausible. Again, self-hosted up on Linode. So big thanks to them for that. And it's, it's working fine. I will get you a publicly visible URL in a second. So you can have a quick look yourself. That's in the Slack now. <laughs> this is so much fun. It's not loading for me, the, the website, <laughs> but I, the fact that it's loading for other people, I'm I'm fine with that. That's good. <laughs> well, 23 people apparently have loaded the page now. So Hey, 24 page views. It's just Alex 23 times. Look at this bounce rate, you sons of... <laughs> uh, we could make that URL public if you like. It's um, the, the, inst the instance of Plausible is probably only temporary. We'll probably productionize that uh, in future, but I'll just put that in the element chat right now, in the matrix chat, sorry. Watch it for a bit and see what happens. And plus, if you're listening to After the Fact, you could go and search back through the JB General chat and find that link. But it's kind of a thank you for being here live. You get the actual plausible link. It's a little perk for being here. Does it update live or do I have to refranch? Oh, I got a franch. Okay. <laughs> squanch. Right. I, I can franch my squanch. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can squanch. Oh. Yeah. Oh, this is so great. All right. Yeah, it's super exciting. That's probably it. We're we're there, I think. I mean, it'll be live for me, you know, probably after I get off air. That's usually how these things work. It's fine. Chris, I have some questions for you. Like, um, you had a certain probably vision of what you wanted a new website to look like. And how close do you think this has gotten or has it, you know, surpassed your expectations in some ways? Are there some features you want us to throw in there for instance or you know what's your first impression you know i disagree i i never really did i in fact that was one of the things i struggled with is i had no vision for what the new site should look like all i knew is that we didn't need okay it's not fully loaded yet all i knew all i know is that we didn't need it's almost loaded look at that i've almost got the new dns all i knew is that we didn't need the video player that had to go I would still think we could tweak the way the hosts and the guests are displayed on the new site, but it's so much just, here's the player, here's the links. It's so much simpler in that way. So that would be like the high level goals that I had. And I think we've accomplished those myself. Yeah. The video player, I think you mentioned was a bit of a band aid on the WordPress site, wasn't it? Was it not? <laughs> yeah. So the, the WordPress site, when we launched it back in the day, JB did video podcasts and turned out we were like, not even exaggerating, we were like a decade too early on that. And so we didn't realize it at the time, but so we built the website to support the fact that all of our shows had a video companion version. Then as we learned the market and we kind of figured out how to do this right, we realized we really need to focus on audio, multi-track, get it right, get, make it sound the best possible. And we made that pivot, but the website theme was designed from the beginning for video and we could make some modifications. It just didn't look right. So we continued to feature the video, even though they were audio podcasts and it was just so incongruent. It just, it was never the way I wanted it to be, you know? Yeah. Well, it is now, I guess you asked me what I thought of, of the new site. And I have to say the, uh, the taste of those who have contributed has been spot on. Of course, dark theme. Because, you know, you and I, I think we like that kind of thing. Or require it? Maybe, yeah, I require it, actually. <laughs> oh, we, we have mentioned sort of a, a new feature request for being able to switch back and forth for those who prefer the daylight stuff. The new website I find really um, complements the artwork of the shows. It lets the artwork kind of uh, speak for itself and be the visual... Um, attraction of the site and I really really like that and I think Cheese did an awesome job of the artwork and it all looks really nice put together side by side like that too it's sort of all really complimentary so I think that's really exciting as far as the functionality I think it, it at least for me feels pretty natural to browse from place to place and you can always sort of get to where you want to go we do need to work a little bit on the menu 
there are a lot of items in that menu and they have not yet been <laughs> organized in terms of priority. So this is like, you know, this is our, what we're calling our 1.0 launch, which was essentially to try to replicate all of the previous websites functionality. And so I think we've gotten there. Uh, there may be a thing or two missing, but I think for the most part, we're pretty much there. And then we're going to just improve on all of that. So Chris, you mentioned you, there are a few things maybe you'd want to change on some of the episode pages or some of the, the profiles. Well, that's, that's, you know, I think the site will just evolve continuously, which is actually very exciting. So what you're seeing today, it's not like that'll be the next 10 years. I don't, that's actually opposite of what we're hoping. We're hoping it keeps changing with JB. Yeah, we have we have uh, kind of brainstorm like post 1.0 milestone stuff. And there's some really good, well, great things in there. There's some stuff I've wanted for a long time. And it was a process of just to, just kind of Brent poking me and saying, all right, but what do you have to have so we can launch? What do you what could we could we make that way? And there was a couple of like really wanted to have items. I really wanted to have in the 1.0 that we just said, all right, we don't we don't have the time to solve that right now. And there were some of those decisions we had to make. I think one of them for you was probably l l being able to boost right on the page. Was that one of them? Yeah, that feels like a big one. I think probably the other one for you as well, if I had to guess, I would say embedded matrix support. Yeah. Embedded matrix chat on the live page would be a good one. Yeah, that'll come. That'll come. Uh, I mean, the Podverse stuff has done a lot of that for us. I think that Podverse player is pretty great. We did have a great player as well, which will probably end up being the player for all of the archive items. So that'll come back. That makes sense. Because they're not, you know, some of the old shows aren't on Podverse. So there's there's not that connection there. So there's a bit of stuff to figure out there. But yeah, I think I think we've gone a long way and it's very exciting. The other thing that we have yet to do, but we will have to do at some point, is there will be a process of what is it like to launch a new show with this website? What what changes need to happen on this website? What accommodations need to happen when we launch a new show? That is, it's a process. And we'll just, we'll figure it out when we get there. I think you might be surprised how easy it will be. Because every show is pretty much just a folder. And it has an index page. And then everything else just kind of gets picked up automatically. So if you want to launch a new show, Chris, we can give it a test. <laughs> Let's do it! Let's <laughs> <Right>? go! <laughs> it's the road show. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys want to hear some stats from the server side about what's going on yes let's hear it okay so the stack that we're using to host this thing it, it's all running in docker uh, so everything's in a container right now traffic is the load balancer and that's using a grand total of 47 megabytes of ram <laughs> the website itself the hugo site is being run out of an nginx container which is using 19 megabytes of RAM. Oh my <laughs> wow. Uh, so all of this is only using, what's that, 60 odd, 65 megabytes of RAM. And uh, so far we've done 200 megabytes of traffic from the node itself. And through Cloudflare, let me just take a quick look. Survey says. We have done about 50 megabytes worth of cached data. So we'll see how that goes. There's a bunch of interesting stuff we're going to learn over the next few days about how the... Cloudflare caching algorithms work and things like that uh, against a self-hosted website like this. You know, so moving forward, we do have plans maybe to put some of the stuff on S3 on the back end instead of running it out of a container. But that's very much TBD and uh, as our time and expertise permits as well, because obviously at the end of the day, we're the ones that have to uh, sysadmin this thing. So as it stands, I'm pretty happy looking at this. Yeah. Well, Alex, I'm curious, what's a feature or two that you're excited for sort of the post 1.0 milestone? Is there, is there something you'd like to see in there, maybe from an infrastructure point of view? I would love to see better integration with the Notes website that we uh, we also run. Uh, there's nothing currently linking to there. That's I think that's an oversight. Uh, the other thing is some kind of just like a JB announcements, like a JB news bar. Like Ooh. if you load that front page at the moment, it's completely static. And I would love to see right now in between, like, say, the Jupiter Broadcasting logo and shows, just a news, you know, like coming up, LA Meetup, for example, or something like that. Right. Or something from the calendar feed. You know what I've thought a long time, too, is it's, it's kind of crazy that we could be live and you could be on our website right now and have no idea we're live. And I don't want something like that's really tacky, that's like a big banner that drops down. 
But how fundamentally bonkers is it that if you go to our website right now and we are streaming a live show, you have no idea that show is going. Like maybe it's just the live link like lights up red or maybe it's something like a little teeny tiny little notification banner under the logo that says tune into the live stream. It just seems wild to me that I've never managed to pull that off. I had it for like for like three months through a WordPress plugin before it just totally broke. And then I never tried again. You know, I know Reese has been working on this idea from the very beginning and has had to wait for a bunch of other sort of technologies on the back end to happen and other pull requests to come in and stuff like that. But um, now is a perfect time, I think, to begin to look at that, especially with the PeerTube integration. I think we've had discussions about tapping into that API and being able to see when we're actually live and pulling that into some kind of no notification on the home site. So I think that's close. That's close. Also consider, Brent, that it's not too far out when we are supporting the podcasting 2.0 live tag, which they call lit. Uh, yeah. And so that's an RSS feed update that perhaps we would just pick up and then regenerate the site with that link in there. And then when the lit tag goes away, the site regenerates and that link goes away. We, we could do that. We could do that. This is so exciting. Or we could do the PeerTube API because the PeerTube API, API is working fantastic for the live embed. So, um, so I'm, I'm picturing something like, you know, that fork me on GitHub little thing that appears in the corner of some websites and things, just like a little tasteful little red light or something to say, you know, we're live, come see us, like that kind of thing. That I think would be perfect. Just something low key, but you notice it. But it's not in your face. I know what we need. And this goes back to my very first website that I wrote when I was, I don't know, 13. And a uh, scrolling marquee. Yes. Marquee. Yeah, I got yeah, yeah, to have, yeah. have a marquee, dude. Yeah. Or, or I could load up Macromedia Flash and have some text that spins around to say, welcome to jb.com. <laughs> well, I got to write. Hold on. Scrolling marquee. That's got to be a title yeah, right there, yeah, right? That's it. That's Web 2.0 right there, isn't it? Who needs the metaverse? You just need a marquee, baby. Pardon our dust, dude. Pardon. Remember, pardon. Remember oh, the like the, the construction. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, we missed a trick. We had a whole opportunity to do a construction theme page. I know. Oh, we missed I know. that. We've missed that chance. We did. We did. Take it down. Boost to gray. All right, we got a handful of boosts coming in. We're trying out a new format, kind of pulling the top boost forward, but we're reading all of them. So thank you, everybody who boosted in. We do appreciate you. The Golden Dragon boosted in with a two gigabyte boost. Isn't it? You sure that's not two megs? <laughs> yeah, it's just about, isn't it? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he says the uh, top four baller seems like a great plan. The top four boost and the baller boost seem like a great plan to see where things land with the audience. I'd like to ask this. With the new site, have you considered a JB blog at all? Maybe cover things that don't make it into some shows or it's another form of extras. So we've experimented with this with Linux Unplugged because there are events that we go to or meetups that we go to where we've got lots of pictures. It usually happens when we've got some great photos we want to share with you guys. That's my job. I could see it happening one day, but we definitely haven't been consistent about the blog thing. So I wouldn't want to like make it seem like something we're going to frequently do. But it does seem like it would be an opportunity to have a place for supplemental information and photos. Say we're doing Linux Unplugged when we're on the road with this upcoming road trip. And, you know, we're doing this great stuff and we got some pictures and video. It'd be nice to have somewhere to throw that up, I suppose. I would love some kind of a cross between like Lychee and Imager. There's like a self-hosted versions of both of those apps. But I, I'm imagining putting the peanut butter and the chocolate together for those things and having like an audience member Dropbox. And then we could approve these things and say, yeah, that's that's not. That's not a hot dog. That can go live, you know? That's not a hot dog. <laughs> I've thought about, also, should we be capturing some video on this road trip and release small videos on JupyterTube or something? Well, we have a bunch from uh, Denver last year still. Oh, right? my oh my gosh, Alex. We have. S and the problem is it's all just super raw. It's like a bunch of B-roll that needs VO and a bunch of audio that's been manually captured that would also need B-roll, uh, and it's just like, <laughs> it's a massive project. It's great content, though, but uh, yeah. yeah. If anybody out there wants a massive video project, <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> let us know. <laughs> you maniac, let us know. All right, we've got uh, 5,000 sats from user 350. Um, he says, totally 100% agree with reading the boosts, or even emails for that matter, based on the content quality as opposed to the amount of sets. That's a great way to battle boost fatigue as well. And 
I get the baller boost idea. I think it all works. It also seems like maybe this is just a transitional issue. In the future, where boosts are commonplace, you're only going to have to be able to read a small portion of select boosts on the air anyway. You won't be able to read every single little ad that gets sent in. Long time JB listener, first time booster. Keep crushing it. You guys rock. Gerbeard. Ger, ger, gerbad? Ger, gerbird. <laughs> you know, I hope in my life at some point someone isn't holding a gun to my head and says, your life is dependent upon Chris Fisher pronouncing this next word correctly. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm in trouble if that's the case. I, I mean, I, you, <laughs> you guys take a stab at that. G R. <laughs> Gerbeard, Gerbird, I mean, you take a stab at that. You got to got any ideas? No, please keep going. <laughs> Garibaldi. I, I, I don't know. It's... Just random words beginning with G. Giraffe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next boost comes in from 412 Linux with 3,072 sats. Coming in hot with the boost. I wanted to support the show so that way we don't have to listen to Brent talk about manscaping. Chris about Raid Shadow Legends or Wes about Ridge Wallets. <laughs> and of course, Alex about mattresses. I think. Uh, no, no, no. I was thinking about launching a screwdriver. Oh. Or a backpack. That would be, no, see, that would be cool. You got it. He's making fun of like all of the stereotypical podcast ads that all the it's podcasters true. fall into. I'm just making fun of Linus, you know? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Boy, talk about some stereotypes. I tell Trust you me, what. bro, as me, would be my warranty status. <laughs> I think you could make a shirt just that just says rock solid because everybody knows how much you like that phrase. <laughs> so. <laughs> or, or, or you can't see it on here, but the don't touch, don't touch my chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no touchy the chair. No touchy the chair. If we do a team sprint, that would be a great sprint shirt. Is don't no touch touchy the chair. The chair. <laughs> All right. Our last boost this week that we're going to get on air at least uh, came in from Rasta Castaversa with a row of ducks. He says, uh, what do you think about reading some of the boosts in the post show that don't make it in the main show? By the way, when Brent said cautiously curious, I think that'd be a great title for a show segment in self-hosted or something. Keep on going. Go podcasting. Long live the boost. Oh, that is great. Well, you know, what I am thinking about is there was a thread on Reddit just the other day about some guy feeling completely overwhelmed about where to start with self-hosting. I feel like, Brent, you could empathize pretty strong with that. I feel overwhelmed all the time. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so perhaps cautiously curious, you know, maybe that's a contender for Brent's second show after brunch. Oh, and I like the alliteration. Um, I'm feeling generous. So I want to just, I did read all the boosts. User 1239, uh, you probably got to update your username and fountain, but you sent us 5,000 sats and you asked me my advice on getting non techie podcasts into podcasting 2.0. I, I don't know if you even need to bother with the value stuff. I would probably start with transcripts and chapters because that makes it more accessible to folks with disabilities. Um, and also, it makes it more accessible to Google search. And those are now standardized in podcasting 2.0. So you might, if you're going to approach them and say, hey, I'd love to have chapters here. How you, here's how you can do it. And by the way, did you know about the podcast index, which is a index that isn't Apple or Spotify, which is really the, the perks of it. And then also uh, DJ225 called me out on my logic. So I wanted to give him a, uh, a little shout out here. Coming in hot with the boost. <laughs> He says Chris's point that all of these crazy ass cryptos are a lot like the Hana Montanas and people are disregarding the RELs because of the Hana Montana Linuxes. Does that analogy make sense? Yeah, completely. He says the one thing that's different is unlike operating systems, financial technology just has like a, dental, a different mindset around it. Um, and I do agree. He's right there. Like people are just a lot more greedy when it comes to the crypto stuff. And that's why I think you just see, well, what I think is, frankly, a grotesque display of human greed uh, in the crypto space. I mean, I mean that I chose those words very carefully. It's a grotesque display of human greed in a lot of the crypto space. Um, unfortunately, that noise makes it difficult to see the signal. So I totally get that. Uh, but he says he's happy to see uh, the boost taking off. It's a fun way to interact and it makes the show feel more interactive. So thank you, everybody. Also, I just wanted to give uh, a couple of uh, shout outs. Boom! We got 5,000 sats from PL Trent saying the new website looks great. He's been checking it out for us and doing some bug testing. We got an elite set of sats three times over from Gene Bean, who's testing out the new Podverse and Albi integrations. Lovely. Way to go. Nicely done. 
Uh, and we also got a thousand sats from C Dubs, who is also testing out that new Albi integration. So that's just really great to see you guys. Before we even get a chance to talk about it on air, our freaking audience is out there trying it out already. How awesome is that? <laughs> mind blowing, dude. Mind blowing. Are, aren't we so lucky? Yeah, I feel. I feel we're very lucky. So thank you. That's why we had to make a show for the audience. That's what Office Hours is right there. Also, just a programming note. September 13th, I believe. Maybe double check that. But I believe September 13th is our next live show for Office Hours. That's the last one in studio before the road trip. Also, maybe the last live one for the month. It's like a 50-50 shot if we're going to be able to do Office Hours on the road. We will at least record one. But it may be like Brent and I, like at a campground uh, picnic table, doing office hours impromptu. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, we should do. You know, you remember the Friday stream? We should do something like that in person at the Airbnb. Yes, we should. Let's remember that. That could be another great opportunity for an office hours, and they might not be live, but they will be in the feed, of course. I will try to make them live if I can, because I like having the archive over at Jupiter Tube. Um, so. Do join us for the September 13th episode. That's our last one in studio. If you want to make it to a live one in any kind of like, you know, the next few weeks, uh, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, Jupiter.tube for that peer tube instance. And of course, you can just go to officehours.hair and subscribe to the RSS feed. Then you just get the released episodes where Drew's cleaned it all up, made a sound better, and you don't got to worry about when we're doing it. Hey, quick question for Brent. Is jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live, does that point to Jupiter Tube? It sure does. Although I do like jupiter.tube. It's got this fancy integration. It's got a little chat there. I think it's still IRC. We got to fix that. <laughs> now it's, but, yeah, uh, it's an embedded, it's an embedded Jupiter Tube. It's a page. Yeah. So, okay. You know, here's the great thing too, is that we'll always have the live stream. So whatever the latest stream is, it's always at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live. Office Hours 11 is right there right now. It's so great. So uh, go try out the new site. If you find any problems, you can find the jupiterbroadcasting.com repo on our GitHub, which is just github.com slash jupiterbroadcasting. And, uh, you know, you can create an issue, let us know about it, and uh, we'll get to work on it. But gentlemen, I think we've done it. Oh, we will, will we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you, everybody, too, who uh, maybe has supported us in their own way. Everybody who's just kind of participated. We do appreciate it. All right, guys, are you ready? Should we get out of here? I think we could. We've done well. Office hours are over then. Goodbye, everybody. Come on now. Get out of here. Get out of here. We'll see you next time. <laughs>